Um, good afternoon, everyone. I will be presenting my product presentation, just like what I discussed in the previous week. Um, uh, it's the Bukoloko. It's under the Frutas group of companies in the Republic of the Philippines. I will tell something and all about the Frutas group of companies because I haven't discussed this one before. And this is the outline of my presentation. I will be discussing the um, information about the company, the budget uh, strategy and allocation, the product itself, uh, importing from Philippines to Taiwan, the marketing strategy, and the promotion activities in Taiwan. So I will first discuss about the company that I mentioned. It's the Frutas Group of Companies. I'll talk about the basic information and some of the preview of their website. So this is the Frutas Group of Company, uh, abbreviated as FGC. It is a customer and service-oriented company that boasts of wide logistics nationwide in the Philippines. Customer concerns are addressed promptly, and we or they have open communications with the business partners and personnel. And these are practices that ensure the maintenance of quality of our, of their stores in every aspect, including service training, operations, and product standardization. And by the way, I also include links in the slides, so it would be made, I mean, it would be more like credible or be um, so you could like search it. Uh, just I'll just upload this one as the professor had mentioned that so you can like search the links if you are interested in it. And. Uh, since its uh, establishment of the FGC, it has expanded to a handful of store concepts, namely Bukone Frutas, if you can see the images clearly. And they also have the Juice Avenue, Black Pearl, the Mango Farm, Frutas Ice Candy, Yes Yes Yo, T-Rex French Fries, etc. etc. and a lot of uh, subsidiaries of the um, FGC. But I will be just discussing one of their famous subsidiaries, which is the Bukoloko. And their persistent marketing and advertising efforts, coupled with their ever innovative retail and business development, that guaranteed their products at the top of their uh, consumers' minds. So this is actually their website. If you are interested to go in, you can just like search the uh, open your browser and go to fruitlessgroup.com, and you will see their variants of the products. So now. I will discuss something that is very essential to this presentation that I haven't discussed um, in the previous time. And it is about the budget strategy and allocation that I want to implement. So we were asked a question that if I were to be given a one million US dollars for the business and uh, for the business budget allocation, how will I spend it? So uh, I've just created a percentage or just an overview of how will I spend it. First is the major part, or the major part, where will I control my budget as the product itself. So basically it's 50% of the 1 million US dollars for the budget. And uh, the next thing is, of course, I need to make my product popular because it's new in Taiwan. So I need to push or give or exert an effort in marketing. So 30% of the budget will be distributed to promoting this Google logo, and 20% of course is for the miscellaneous. I'll talk about it uh, later. And for the 50%, it is actually, you know, 50% of the million US dollars is for minus thousand. And first is, I would look into the production of the uh, product, of course. Uh, this includes the coconuts exported from Philippines, which is estimated at 150,000, US dollars because this is primarily the like the star of the business. Of course you have to spend money on the product you are creating or the product you're selling. And of course the ingredients, it's not just plainly a coconut because you have added some like uh, like flavors, etc. etc. So it's like estimated to be fifty thousand dollars, that's like too much. And uh, I will also allot a budget to the materials, 
manufacturing and distribution of around 250,000 US dollars. Uh, for example, of course, you need to spend in bottles, straws, and other like the that makes your product more presentable. It's estimated to be 10,000 US dollars. The product labels, $5,000 um, for the printing and stuff. Sorry, I, I just made this more specific just to make it more realistic. And also the labor costs for minimal number of employees. Of course, you'll just start a business, not the, you'll start a business with a big one, so you will just have a minimal number of employees for the manufacturing and distribution that is estimated to be 8,000 to 85,000 US dollars. And of course, the site rental for manufacturing, this is a small site, and for the distribution, for example, in malls. I will just discuss it later on. It would cost me like 175 US dollars. And the product development, of course, it's, your product is not just stable. It is not just what you introduce on the first month of Bukologo. It will also be the same, same in product and the product of Bukologo in the next two years. So, of course, you will need to spend the product development. Research and development, product or test failure, estimated to be 25,000 US dollars. So now is the marketing side on how will I spend or how will I make my product known. It's estimated to be 300,000 US dollars. Um, I've made or selected a few modes of marketing. First marketing that I will use is called telemarketing, estimated to be 150,000 US dollars. The television marketing could cost around 100,000. And of course, telemarketing is not just about television, but also advertisement marketing with endorsers. And of course, who will be like, I don't know any famous endorsers here in Taiwan, but I would be considering it as my marketing strategy that would cost me around 50,000 US dollars. We also have the face-to-face -face marketing that is estimated to be 50,000 US dollars. I will let the people or Taiwanese locals, foreigners, to have my product be tested or be tried. So I'll be giving away for free or to sell the product initially at a lower cost, and it would cost me like around fifty thousand US dollars. I would also be involving my product in events. So we have the event marketing and sponsorships that would cost me fifty thousand US dollars. I would be participating in conventions and events. So yes, that's thousand US dollars. And lastly, we have the social media marketing, which is trending right now. It's estimated to be 150,000 US dollars because I, I know that in Facebook, if you want to promote your um, product, you have to um, select the desired range of the product um, advertisement. For example, if I will just be endorsing the product to just Kaohsiung, so it would be cheaper than endorsing something to the whole Taiwan. So I would like to promote it because most people or like um, some people, most people are now into social media. So that would be or have a big impact to my product promotion. So that would cost me around 150,000 US dollars. And I'm also considering the email promotions, for example, in companies and other um, establishments. And lastly, we have the budget allocation for the product. So this comes for the like emergency funds, just in case, of course, this is a trial business or a business that is not yet established. So you have to make sure that your business would be long or would stay long, or you call it longevity. Uh, your product will not be just launched for this month, then on the following six months, it has, it's gone. So you have to spend money for this. I also um, allotted budget for the risk management as what the previous speaker has discussed, like uh, Ms. Marianne Of course, risk management, this is not just in the media, but also in business. You have to invest in risk management that I have a lot of 100,000 US dollars for it. This includes the material price volatility that costs 25,000 US dollars, the business and hidden taxes that, of course, you have to consider it. It's around 25,000 US dollars. And of course, the emergency fund for health risks and other issues. You're selling a food product you have to consider the health of your customers. So just in case, of course, that is li likely to happen because it's a food product and it costs around 50,000 US dollars. And of course, I'm also considering the corporate social responsibility, just like the other speaker. Um, I'm just like consolidating what the previous speaker have been here to, to the business. So it might be uh, those 
um, topics that were discussed is very relevant to this kind of presentation. And uh, CSR would be around like, 50,000 US dollars because I believe a million US dollars for starting a business is too much. And of course, you have to um, invest something for the development of your employee and their safety, including their insurance and their training that would cost you 50,000 US dollars. So I've talked too much about the marketing, or shall I say the budget allocation, because this is the thing that I haven't discussed before. So I will now tell you about the product. The Bukoloko, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, it could be a shake, it could be a juice or whatever. And I will briefly discuss here the benefits because I discussed to this one and the previous one. And we have, I have searched a video that will be uh, summarizing the benefits of the coconut juice. So this is just an overview, the eight benefits that I believe you have already know this one. The first one is it uh, is an aid in weight loss efforts. Number two, it's for the picture perfect skin. Number three, it's the ultimate hangover remedy. Number four, it facilitates digestion. Number five, it boosts hydration. Number six, reduces blood pressure. Number seven, rich in nutrients, and these are the vitamins and minerals that you can get if you have or like drink a puka juice or the bukaloko. And lastly, it's a, compatible with the human blood. Now, I will show you a video that will summarize some benefits or the benefits that I haven't mentioned in the previous slides. So it's from the New York Times. So please watch the video. Coconut water is not only a $400 million global food craze. In terms of marketing, it also appears to have nine lives. This clear liquid drawn from green young coconuts started selling in the United States a decade ago as a superfood with the power to fight viruses, osteoporosis, kidney disease, and more until nutrition has shot those claims down. Then it was built as better than sports drinks for rehydration until a 2011 class action lawsuit nipped that claim. Now, Coconut water is being sold as a somewhat more helpful type of water with a growing host of added flavors to keep buyers excited. So what's in this packaged drink? Generally, coconut water has much less sugar than other fruit juices and a fair amount of nutrients, including magnesium and potassium. But so does a banana with a glass of water. And without coconut water, it's price tag of $1.99 and up for 11 ounces. And should coconut water run through all nine of its lives, competitors are ready to swoop in. The very latest in liquid nature includes bottled water from maple tree sap. All right, so that's the video that summarizes the benefits of the product. I click something. So here, now I will tell you something about the how or why is the product be marketable to Taiwan? So this is an important question because, uh, yes, I do have a good product, but would this be like, um, liked by Taiwanese or by most of the Taiwanese? Or will, this, will you, like some Taiwanese, would buy this one? So I have presented you some uh, reasons on how or why is this product be marketable to Taiwan. So. If you guys are aware with the law of supply and demand, uh, why would you supply someone to those who do, who do not demand something? So this is the first reason. According to the business inquirer.net, there is a growing demand of the Taiwanese market for healthier and more natural food options. So this means that if I would be presenting something or a new product to the Taiwanese market, it should be considering the health benefits or something that would love or, some, or something that Taiwanese would love to buy. So I think this would be a good reason why is the product marketable and why Boba Juice. So this would be the next answer to my question. Boba Juice is abundant and fresh in the Philippines. And Philippines is one of the top producers of coconut in the world. So why in the Philippines? Because Philippines is a tropical country. They have the best fruits in the world, according to Gary Swift, 
the co-founder of Ghost in the Road. You can check the website to see if it's uh, really accurate. And why Philippines? Because Philippines is very near to Thailand. Philippines produces good quality coconut, and coconut can be easily exported from the Philippines to Taiwan. So this is now my marketing strategy. My marketing strategy, I mentioned this one earlier, so I would just like to show it to you again. Of course, I will be considering telemarketing, face-to-face -face marketing, event marketing and sponsorships, social media marketing, etc. to make my product known, not just in Kaohsiung, not just in Taipei, but in the whole Taiwan. So this is my promotion activities. Uh, it includes the mall branches and the variants of size and flavor. So for the mall branches, Boko Loco is typically found in malls in the Philippines. So that is what I'm trying to, or what will I try to do here in Taiwan. So this would be also the marketing strategy when it's brought here in Taiwan. So I would just like plot that like just a wish list or my list of malls that I would love to have the Boko branch, Boko Loco branch. So my target malls are Kaohsiung Arena, the Dream Mall, Ita, Ita, Mall. Yeah, Ita Mall, and Taroka Park, if you have been there, it's a beautiful place. And these malls, I believe, are one of the like the most um, visited malls here in, here in Kaohsiung, but I also want to explore more in Taipei and some parts of Kaohsiung, uh, some parts of Taiwan, because these are the malls that I have been to, so I already know the setting and the location. So that is one thing that the business uh, like proprietor should consider that he or she must know the location strategically. And of course, I also targeted other sites like schools and parks because in my home university, they are also selling buko. And of course, why is this important? The variance of size and flavor. Of course, you love to try other flavors, you just don't buy buko for the consistent flavors. So it's like you're just buying water. And another incredible source that I have found is from the WordPress. It's like a blog site that according to a blog, Taiwanese have more sophisticated tastes. So they don't just eat food, but they also want to like, uh, how do I say this word? Um, they love to feel their, what they're eating. Is that true to the Taiwanese locals? If you don't just buy food, you also want your considering taste, right? Okay, so this site is credible. So a solution to this is a variety of flavors will be offered to them. And not just for the locals, but also for the foreign country or foreign people visiting the country. So just like the picture here, it's like, can you see this picture? They have the cocoa juice, they have the cocoa panda. Uh, they have the cocoa milk, the coconut milk, cocoa melon if you know the melon, um, cocoa berry for the strawberry flavor, buko shake, and buko fruits. So of course, here in Taiwan, if something like a globalization or a company penetrating Taiwan, they was also consider the taste of the Taiwanese. So maybe in the future, they will have like a, what kind of flavor, like a milk tea. I believe there's a milk tea coconut shake. So I think that would be best to have it here when, when the Bukolo we have it here in Taiwan to have a milk tea flavor, I guess. And of course, it is not just us who wants to be successful. We also want you to be entrepreneurs and be successful by having your own Bukolo cards or by franchising business. So to expand the business over the branches, we offer you the, brand, the franchising business to the locals and of, of course to those who want to invest in this business. So the franchise package, if you see this beautiful cart and all of the packages, the materials and everything, the ingredients, the package is approximately 50,000 Philippine pesos or 32,000 new Taiwanese dollars. So that's, I mean, a very cheap way to start a business. So I'm gonna tell you the starting price of this product, I am telling you, and the cheapest product is the Coco Zapto, if you see the 35 pesos here. So that is around 25,000 new Taiwanese dollars. And for example, we are also considering that, like what David Pan mentioned, that if you distribute it in malls, you have to consider the price going up. So the ceiling price for the cheapest product could be 35 uh, new Taiwanese dollars. Still cheap, 
and affordable for a very healthy drink. And of course, the highest cost, as you can see here, is uh, 65 pesos. It's a 22 ounce boucher. It costs uh, 40 NTT or the Taiwanese dollars. And the ceiling price for this might be if you want to sell these in malls or even or if you're considering having a franchise in this kind of business, it's for 50 Taiwanese dollars. So that's all. Stay refreshed, stay healthy. Thank you for listening.